Hi, I'm Jessica and we're here at the Exploratorium with artist and maker Ken Murphy. Ken, you've got an installation here in the Phyllis E. Wattis webcast studio called A History of the Sky. Can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Sure. Um, so basically I'm, I'm doing a long-term time-lapse movie uh, of the sky and the intention is to capture sort of patterns of wind and light over the course of, uh, of an entire year and capture rhythms and patterns that normally occur, that we're aware of, but that normally occur at a rate that are too slow to observe immediately. Um, and so what I'm doing is capturing, I have a camera that's capturing an image every 10 seconds uh, around the clock. And then with those images, I'm, I'm creating this composite movie that shows, uh, in this case, in the current piece, it's um, 147 days worth of footage. And each day is represented by a single square in this grid and they're consecutive days as you look across the grid. Um, and they're all playing back in parallel. So at any given moment, it's the same time of day. Uh, and so when I'm looking up the screens, let's say right now, for example, I'm looking at, uh, it's 3.30, but every little square, every little movie is playing 3.30. Right, at, any, if you, at one instant it's 3.30, and then they're all going through the day sort of in sync. So they all start at the exact same time and they all end at the exact same time. This sounds like it was quite a technical challenge. Uh, what was the hardest part about making this piece? Actually, and you said it's a work in progress as well. Uh, yeah, so there are a lot of different challenges. Um, I have a background in doing uh, programming and system administration, and it's sort of a, a lot of the challenges were like IT problems. Um, so uh, it took time, but um, you know, it's, uh, Nothing, you know, it was, there was just a lot of work involved in just getting everything set up so that it could be reliable. How will it turn out when it's all done? Yeah, so like I said, right now it's showing 147 days and the plan is to show uh, an entire year, uh, 365 days at once. And what I think will be interesting about that is you'll get, when you get the full year, you'll see certain cycles that repeat over the course of a year, primarily the differing lengths of days. So you'll see sort of a cascading effect that is, that is cyclical in nature that will sort of cascade across the entire piece. So it'll be all in one line and each day will bump off one of the next. So you'll see the most recent day at the end. Is that right? Right, exactly. Uh, I'd like it to be, a, yeah, the intention is for it to be a dynamic piece that every day it's updated with the most recent data. And so you'll see the last 365 days. And so sort of a last question here, when somebody walks into this space, what are you hoping that they'll feel or get out of it? Do you have sort of a, a goal in that way? Yeah, um, you know, I, basically I think with, and this is sort of uh, why I think time-lapse movies are interesting is because um, they sort of reveal patterns that, like I was saying, that, are, that we're aware of. Like we know that the lengths of days change over the course of a year, but it happens at a rate that you can't really you know, relate to it on an aesthetic level, where you, you don't really uh, get a sense of the rhythm of the change of that change. But when you look an entire year at once, uh, you do see these rhythms that are happening. So um, that's one thing I want people to sort of connect with with that, because I think a lot of patterns that people do relate to patterns that occur in nature, mm -hmm. and this is one that's just a little bit outside of our perception. So I think it's interesting to sort of bring that into the realm of our perception. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that. We're he all about perception here at yeah. the Exploratorium. It's wonderful to see your work in progress. A History of the Sky is going to be up at the Exploratorium through January 31st in the Phyllis E. Wattis webcast studio, which is right next to the cafe, about halfway back the Exploratorium on the right-hand side. And you can find out more about Ken's work at... Uh, MurphLab, M-U-R-P-H-L-A-B dot com slash H-S-K-Y. So come check it out. Thanks.